Alright, what's up guys? So, Wrestling Flashbacks is uploading a video titled 10 Times Wrestlers Were Legitimately Angry With Their Opponents. I it's it's something that I know of, but I'm like, fam, like I it, it like I always wonder. I be watching like even wrestling now, and I'm like, do they do they really like each other though? Like I I'm curious about that. But anyways, and that being said, let's go ahead and get into this video. Make sure if you guys haven't go subscribe to Wrestling Flashbacks for more videos like this. But in that being said, let's get into this video. There have been many occasions in wrestling so where superstars sure, right. are in the ring and become legitimately pissed off with their opponents. This could have been because something happened backstage prior to the match, or their opponent did something hey. in the ring which really ticked them off. Sometimes they go backstage and take out their anger, and on other occasions, they remember the incident so that they can dish out a receipt at a later date. In this video, we look back on 10 specific times a wrestler got legitimately mad at their opponent. Kicking things off with what was a rare bad match between Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit occurring at one huh. of the stand 2005. This was a far cry from the usual great encounters that the two have together. You can tell that they were both legit pissed off with each other, even before the bell. The crowd didn't help the match by directing chants at the Raw and SmackDown wrestlers who were watching from the crowd. For 200 times in the United States, in Canada, in Japan. Eddie ended up suffering a busted nose. Blood is already flowing from his nose. Oh, wow. And would then be slightly out of position for the crossface, which he ended up submitting from. Benoit and Eddie would continue to stare holes through each other after the match. You can even see Eddie mouth the words, I owe you one. Eddie was reportedly not happy that he would be losing to Benoit because he felt the loss would hurt his momentum and he was in the huh. middle of a personal feud with Rey Mysterio on SmackDown. The match with Benoit would take place just five months before Eddie Guerrero would pass away, Dang. which may further explain Eddie's condition in the match, as it was during this time that Eddie would be usually seen hunched over in pain backstage before and after he wrestled. This That's wasn't crazy. the first time Eddie had been unhappy due to what happened in the ring, as just nine months prior to the one night stand match, Guerrero would be beaten down by Kurt Angle's henchmen at the time, Mark Jindrak and Luther Reigns. Once Eddie got backstage, he would take his frustration out on Angle by saying how Kurt tried to hurt him, despite Angle barely having touched Eddie. This led to a backstage altercation, which Angle explained mm. on his podcast. Eddie was pissed and he got my face and he's yelling and he's spitting. So I pushed him. He tried to double leg me and I got him in a front face lock and started choking him out. And Big Show broke it up. John Bradshaw wow. Layfield goes to Eddie and says, why would you double leg an Olympic gold medalist? And Eddie says, because I'm freaking stupid. That's why. <laughs> Just like Eddie would blow up backstage following this match. Big Show would do the same following a match. That like that's, that's one thing that I kind of, because I remember reading uh, Batista's book. And just hearing that, because I got into wrestling uh, like two years later, so I didn't get a chance to see like Eddie Guerrero and all that. And you know, and it, it's in like, no, nah, like I, a part of me is like, dang, man, I wish I would have like, I know I could just like very well go like on YouTube or anywhere else and watch like Eddie Guerrero matches and best moments and all that stuff. But no, nah, like, you know, I, a part of me to like, I, yeah, it's like, I like kind of regret not getting into wrestling uh, earlier and stuff. Like, I because what was I doing in like 2005 and prior? Like, I wasn't doing anything. I was in, I was like eating cereal, watching cartoons and playing video games. Like, I, I could have been watching some WWE, but anyways. It's Jericho on Raw in September 1999. Jericho would write in his second book that Show was so mad at Jericho's poor attempt to give him a short arm scissors. Just look at that execution. It must have definitely been way down on his list of 1,004 holds. Show felt that the cruiserweights shouldn't be applying holds to a man of his size. <laughs> and Jericho's bitch that before he applied the hold oh, wow. probably wouldn't have helped matters. Needless to say, Big Show was pissed and he wanted to kill Chris after the match. Show then threw stuff around backstage in anger and even punched out a car stereo. Show Dang. also threatened to pick Jericho up and use him as a Q-tip. Next is a classic <laughs> tale of revenge, although this was just as much real life as it was storyline. On Farouk's first night in the WWF, he would attack Ahmed Johnson, kicking him in the kidney. Following this, hey. Ahmed would say it felt like he got shot. Right in my kidney. I mean, it felt like a shotgun hit. Wow. And I was like, oh, I'll be damned. Dang. He had no idea anything was wrong until later that night when his breathing began to change which led him to going into hospital and ended up being out of action for a month with a kidney injury as a direct oh, wow. result of Farouk's stiff boot. Ahmed would say he believed Farouk kicked him so hard on purpose as he felt Farouk was jealous of his success. Farouk later admitted that it was in fact a receipt to teach Ahmed a lesson for being stiff with other wrestlers in the past. Oh, but that wow. saga didn't end there as eight months later Ahmed would finally get his revenge. He got a receipt for it by delivering a stiff spine buster to Farouk in a match, 
driving his head down, causing Dang. Farouk to break a couple of ribs. No, I got to oh, wow. him back to the hospital. I gave him a spine buster and then drove my head in his ribs and broke a couple of his ribs. Dang. Wow. As we've seen so That's far, crazy. Can show their legit frustrations with their opponents in various different ways. I and think Shawn I Michaels did. I've seen this one before. I'm, I'm familiar with the this 1996 one. 1996 SummerSlam in his match with Vader. Sean went to the top rope and was to attempt an elbow drop that Vader was supposed to dodge by moving out of the way. Vader, however, never moved as Sean landed on his feet and then he began to visibly berate Vader wow. for forgetting the spot. Never in my life had it happened to me. Everyone forgets spots and even Sean forgets spots. Well, if you forget something, boom, you do something else, then you come back to it, right? I mean, it, it's, it's called wrestling. Brought to tears by HBK, Vader's time got worse, as it became clear he was not going to become the company's next monster heel. Instead, at a pay-per-view, Vader was forced to refer to himself as a fat piece of shit by the writers. I ain't nothing but a big piece of shit. Wow. And even Vince McMahon joined in complaining about his employee's odor during a live AOL chat. Forgetting a spot and getting screamed at mid-match is crazy. something Kofi Kingston also experienced when he wrestled John Cena and Randy Orton in a triple threat match on Raw in 2010. Orton was to get the win after hitting Kingston with a punt kick, but Kofi failed to get in position for the move, which led to Orton winning with the RKO instead. Upon delivering the move, Orton would yell stupid, I... stupid at Kofi as he lay on the mat. Goes for the RKO. The error is supposedly what ended Kofi's push during this time. Kofi would get his own back on Orton nine years later on an episode of SmackDown by calling him stupid. Right. Ultimately, we know the only time almost counts is in huh. William Regal had just I guess that's just good writing. I, I always thought that. I don't know, like, compared to the other ones where it's like you had Shawn Michaels literally stumping a man's head out and then the other guy breaking his ribs. I think somebody called me stupid mid-match, like... I would rather, in my opinion, I would rather have that than somebody breaking my ribs or stumping my head out and things. And I'm like, yeah, or yeah, kicking me in the uh, kidneys. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I guess that's just good writing. But like, I don't know. It just always came off as like it wasn't like, 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 like scripted. Like, I was, I'm not going to say real or fake, but scripted. But anyways. Let's come back from a seven week suspension in WCW. In the lead up to his match on Nitro with a fresh face Goldberg, he claims that he was told by the agent to have a competitive six minute match. Goldberg, mm. however, wasn't used to working these longer length matches. So Regal maintains that he was just working around him and trying to get him to do stuff. I don't hit him any harder than I hit anybody else. Goldberg himself feels that Regal was particularly stiff with him and took advantage of him on national TV because he was green and would let the veterans do whatever they wanted with him. Uh, how bad does that sound when he said I made him look foolish? He did. He, he did. Just don't try to take advantage of me on national TV when I'm a piece of clay in your hands and I'll do anything you want. Let me know it's going to be a Japanese match so I can give you some back. Not so I can hmm. be led around by a guy who's going to kick me in the freaking head when I'm sitting on all fours. Who do you believe? Let us know in the comments. We Dang. have a celebrity entrant up next, as in 2006, the Jackass oh, yeah. came into the WWE to promote their latest movie. Yep. It was scripted that Umaga would come in the ring and beat uh, him. Steve-O did, for those that are like curious more about this, Steve-O did talk about this. Um, like I think he, yeah, because I think he has his own YouTube channel. Because I was trying to think, I was like, it's either he has his own YouTube channel and he talked about it on there. Or it was just one of them like them like random YouTube channels that just be uploading video. They'll upload like one video and they'll get like a million views and then they'll disappear. But no, Steve O he he did upload a, a video like going deeper in depth with this. I, they might mention it in this, but anyways. Down on an episode of Raw, Umaga delivered his usual stiff shots as he would with any other wrestler. But things turned bad due to Steve O's lack of awareness to sell the move properly. He would end mm -hmm. up laughing at his co-star Chris Pontius, but Umaga felt disrespected because he wasn't selling his beat down. Umaga came back in the ring to deliver Dang. a brutal splash from the top rope. I don't know that I'm yep. really dead, so I keep moving around. I'm like, oh, and like, he's not done beating me up. Steve-O continued to move around instead of appearing knocked out, to which Umaga then beat Steve-O into a blackout with an incredibly stiff elbow. Oh. Dang. That's crazy. Public Enemy spent two months in WWE in 1999, after their time in ECW. And their most notable appearance was losing a squash yep. match to the Acolytes. They came in late that day, which in Bradshaw's eyes was a sign of disrespect, and further added to the animosity between the two teams due to Public Enemy's ties with WCW at the time. 
They then came up to Bradshaw just before he went out, telling him that they no longer wanted to do the spot with the table. This pissed off the Acolytes even more, and Ron Simmons basically said if they don't want to take the table, we'll take the table to them. <laughs> they then went on to deliver a brutal beat. Dang. Sometimes it has to get to that. You know, and it's unfortunate, but it happens. They're not stopping Dang, it's like, homie. Relax. It was real. A final moment on this list is a receipt, but not the kind we're used to. You see, a traditional oh, yeah. receipt occurs when a wrestler accidentally cracks his opponent stiff in the jaw, yeah, that... and they can expect something as hard right back. But in this case, it's defined yeah. as if a wrestler inflicts brain damage Classic. upon their opponent and leaves them permanently blind in one eye. The opponent is therefore within their rights to attempt to murder them. At Living Dangerously 2000, Vic Grimes, per New Jack's telling of the story, had to be dragged into executing the agreed upon stereo balcony dive spot. Unfortunately for Jack, Grimes was quite hefty and he fell harder and faster right on top of Jack's cranium. New Jack missed a month of action despite requiring far longer to recuperate. The receipt took place after New Jack and Grimes had already cooperated through a match at Hardcore Heaven later that year. A couple years later, at XPW Free Fall, the two competed in a match where New Jack missed a fairly obvious target, that being about 100 tables, and sent Grimes directly onto the apron That's from about crazy. 40 feet. I wanted him to hit the floor, I just didn't throw him hard enough. I was trying to throw his ass to the floor. No, please don't! <laughs> <laughs> Jay, that Absolutely scream. Ridiculous. So yeah. There you have it, folks, ten times a wrestler got legitimately angry with their opponent during or after a match. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it. A I just realized, like, I didn't even watch this uh, video on full screen. I was like, something just didn't seem right about this, but I, yeah, just realized that. My apologies, but like and subscribe to the channel. Also, do check out our similar video on ten infamous receipts in WWE history. Well, I would imagine anybody, and I'll see you next time. I imagine anybody that um, did uh, overall watch this, uh, you will watch the original video first and then watch my reaction afterwards. But anyways, no, that was a pretty good video. Yeah, that last video, I remember when I very first started getting in, um, when I very first got into wrestling, that was like one of the first few videos I had seen. So yeah, it was, uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm telling you, man, wrestling, wrestling might seem all fun and things, but at times, like, when it's, yeah, when it ain't scripted and them guys is actually mad, yeah, it, it, it ain't gonna be good for anybody, so, but no, that was a pretty good video, make sure you go subscribe to Wrestling Flashbacks for more videos like that, like, subscribe to me too, and I'll talk to you guys later, thank you guys for watching, and peace.